Hello, my name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. In this video, we're going to demonstrate collecting logs from the endpoints in your network using Elastic Agent. As part of your Security Onion installation, Elastic Agent installers that are customized for your deployment were generated and made available through the SOC web interface. All you need to do to gain significant visibility into the Windows, Linux, and macOS endpoints on your network is to install them and configure Security Onion to accept their connections. We'll talk through that in this video. If you use previous versions of Security Onion, you may remember that it once came with multiple endpoint agents supporting different use cases, some of which could be difficult to install and configure at scale. In 2.4, those have all been consolidated to a single agent, the Elastic Agent, which is centrally managed and updated by your Security Onion Manager or Fleet Node. In this video, we'll show how to download that agent, how to install it on a Windows box, what the default configuration will collect, and some of the tools that we can leverage for analyzing those collected logs in Security Onion. Let's get started. As always, we log into the Security Onion console, or SOC, with the username and password that we configure during installation. Once we're logged in, we'll be on the overview screen with the various components of Security Onion listed along the left-hand side of the browser window. For right now, we're mostly interested in downloads and Elastic Fleet. Let's start with downloads. As you can see, there are installers here for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. The Mac OS installers support both the Intel and ARM architectures. Make sure you get the proper one for your target endpoint. I want to mention once again that these agents are pre-configured and specific to your particular installation of Security Onion. They will attempt to reach out and contact your manager using its hostname, so make sure that your endpoints are able to resolve that hostname using either DNS or a line in the local host file. As it says here, these files are not signed. If that's something that's required in your environment, you'll need to use the signed installers directly from Elastic and then configure them manually. If you'd like help with that, my colleagues and I in professional services can assist you. The agents will need to be able to communicate with the manager on TCP ports 8220, 8443, and 5055. We'll walk through opening those ports on the Security Onion host firewall shortly, but also make sure that any intervening routers or firewalls between your endpoint and your manager are allowing that traffic through. Now let's take a look at Elastic Fleet. As you can see, clicking on Fleet opens the interface in a new tab. This is part of Kibana. If you're prompted to log in separately, use the same username and password that you did to log into SOC. This first screen when you log into Fleet will show the Elastic agents that are currently enrolled with this server. At the very least, you should see entries for your manager node using the SO Grid Nodes General Agent Policy and your Fleet server using the Fleet Server Policy. These policies are basically bundles of integration configurations that tell the agent on a particular endpoint what sort of logs to collect and from where. We configure those with the Agent Policies tab at the top of the screen. For purposes of this video, this endpoint's initial policy is the one that we're interested in. That's the default policy that will be used to configure any endpoints that are not part of your security and grid that you install the Elastic Agent on. Let's take a look and see what's included. As you can see, there are four integrations configured in this policy. We'll start with Elastic Defend Endpoints. At the top here, you'll see some of these items that require a Platinum Elastic license. If you're interested in learning more about Elastic's licensing options, please contact us. Scrolling past those, you'll see that there are Operating System Event Collection configurations for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux systems. For the Mac OS and Linux deployments, the agent will retrieve file, network, and process events, that is, low-level operating system telemetry, with no additional configuration. For Windows, it will retrieve a bit more, including things like DNS, DLL, and credential access events. Again, this is all data that will be gathered automatically, with no further configuration of the endpoint. No trying to configure Audit D or Audit Kit or build Sysmon for Linux, the Elastic Agent does this information gathering by default. It's hugely helpful. That's all this integration is doing. Let's go back to the list and look at the next one. The next integration is OS Query Endpoints. There aren't any configuration options in there, so I won't open it up, but what this provides is for the ability to perform database-style queries across your deployed agents. So, for example, 
If you want to query which machines in your environment have a particular registry key set, or who has a download that matches a particular hash value, you can do that with an OS Query Live Query. We won't get into the details of that here, but if that's something you'd like to see in a future video, please feel free to reach out or post something in the comments to let us know. Next is System Endpoints. This integration tells the agent to collect standard logs from the endpoint, including auth and syslog logs on Unix-style systems, and the three standard Windows event logs on a Windows machine. You'll see here that by default, all the logs will be collected. But if you want to customize your deployment and only collect certain event IDs, you can do that here. This is very similar to the configuration options for WinLogBeat in previous versions of the platform, just moved into the web interface rather than a local YAML file on each endpoint. Finally, let's take a look at the Windows Endpoints integration. This integration collects some of the additional, application-specific logs that are generated by some Windows subsystems. As you can see, by default, the agent will collect forwarded events if you install this on a Windows event collector. It will also collect PowerShell and PowerShell operational logs if those are enabled, and if you've installed Sysmon in your environment, it will collect those logs as well. I'd like to mention at this point that there is a bit of overlap between the Elastic Agent Endpoint logs that are collected from the Elastic Defend integration and the logs that are generated by Sysmon. Things like process execution or file creation events will show up in both sets of logs. By and large, I found that the Sysmon logs offer more granularity and more detail, but of course that comes with the challenge of deploying Sysmon throughout your environment. So those are the default settings for the default endpoint policy. Those may not be a perfect fit for use cases in your environment, and that's fine. If you'd like to universally change the default policy settings, you can certainly do that. If you'd like to change them for a subset of your endpoints, you can use this ellipsis menu under Actions and select Duplicate Policy. Then, change the settings in the copy that you make and assign that new policy to the appropriate endpoints. Now that we've looked at the policies that will be applied to an agent, let's see what it looks like to deploy one. The first thing we will need to do is open up the Security Onion firewall to allow endpoint agents to contact it and enroll. So let's do that. To allow an Elastic agent to connect to the Security Onion instance and enroll in Fleet, we need to explicitly add it to an allow list in the firewall. Here in configuration, click on the quick link on the right hand side that says allow Elastic endpoints to send logs. This will take you to the proper spot to configure that option. Now in this box, we just type in the IP address or the CIDR subnet of the endpoint or endpoints that we are collecting logs from. As you can see here, I'm accepting connections from anything in the 192.168 IP space here in this test environment. If I want to add more IPs or subnets, I can do that on a new line. For example, if I've got VPN clients on 10.1.1.0 24, I can add that here. Once you've entered the address or list of addresses that you want, click on the green check mark and then click on Options and Synchronize Grid to push the change into production immediately. Now let's see what we need to do on the endpoint side. As you can see here, I've got a Windows 10 desktop with a fresh download of the Elastic Agent in the Downloads directory. To install, all I need to do is right click on my downloaded exe and select Run as an Administrator. Say yes for user account control, you'll see a command window open up to tell us that the installation has been initiated, and then it's just a matter of waiting a couple minutes for it to complete. When the installation completes, you'll notice that it leaves behind a log file. It's best to check this log after installation to make sure that it was successful. If there's an issue with contacting the server or resolving its name, you'll see errors here that will indicate what needs to be fixed. Looks like this is all good, so let's return to the SOC interface and confirm that our logs are coming in. The easiest place to check for these host logs is in the host dashboards that are included under the Dashboards tool. So let's click on Dashboards. Then we'll select Host Overview to open up that dashboard. You'll see here this gives us a high-level view of the host logs that are being ingested from Elastic Agents in this environment, including these two Windows hosts and this Linux host listed here. As always, these dashboard tables are fully interactive, and I can use them to adjust the query producing all of the visualization. For example, 
If I want events only related to this mBishop account, I can click on that username, then include to add it to the query, and you'll see all of these tables update accordingly. Going back to the top, you'll see there are other dashboards included by default that look at different facets of this host data. If I want to look specifically at process data on my endpoints, I'll select the Host Process Activity Dashboard. This is using that same host data collected by Elastic Agent, but it's providing more depth specifically related to process events. So if I want to return to mBishop's account, I can do that. You see here I'm concentrating on only a single host, so that one username on that one host. And then I can look in this parent process executable table for something that has a lot of child processes, say servicehost.exe. We'll click on that and include. And you see now I have a list and a Sankey diagram of all the child processes that were kicked off by servicehost.exe running on that host under Ambishop's account. This is a little bit crowded, so I can click on the expand icon here to blow it up to full screen. This is excellent, easy to use log information that I'm able to pull in from a single agent and then pivot around and investigate with the tools in SOC. I can just press escape to leave this full screen view. Finally, if I want to, I can zoom into a particular process to see its full ancestry. Let's go down to the events here and we'll say this background task host.exe, click on that, then actions, then process ancestors. Now you see I have a multi-stage Sankey diagram showing where this process came from. First there was winanit.exe, which launched services.exe, which launched servicehost.exe, which launched background task host.exe. I can zoom all the way back to see the full process chain with a single click. This is remarkably powerful stuff during an investigation. In addition to the process dashboard, there are also pre-built dashboards for host network and host file logs, which are just as easy to use when drilling into the data. And just a point I want to mention, all of those network logs are generated with community IDs, which means you can pivot easily from a Suricata alert or a Zeek log directly to the endpoint process that generated the suspicious traffic. I hope you found this video useful and it's helped to expand your understanding of how to ingest endpoint data into Security Onion and use it as part of your analysis and investigation. Using these host logs in addition to the network monitoring logs from the rest of the platform can give you a holistic view of all the data moving around in your environment and a great vantage point from which to spot suspicious or malicious traffic and further investigate it. If you have specific questions about details that were not covered in this video, please check out our documentation at securityonion.com slash docs. If you're interested in our training options to learn more about the platform, please go to securityonion.com slash training. And finally, if you're having trouble getting this to work or if you have other questions about the platform, please start a new thread in our community discussion forum at securityonion.com slash discuss. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.